Since you're obviously interested in Live Edge, I thought it'd be cool to show a couple of slabs from Gobi Walnut because they've been answering a ton of questions for me on this Live Edge topic to make sure all my information is correct. I also thought it'd be cool for you to guess how much this slab on the left costs and how much this smaller slab on the right costs. And I'll show you how much each of those costs at the end of the video. Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week we're talking Live Edge for beginners. And I want to make this video because when I started woodworking, there either wasn't enough information out there or I didn't do enough research or both and my project did not go very well. So I wanted to make a few videos to kind of give you the tools necessary to feel really confident building your own live edge table in your garage or shop. And this week we're gonna be covering just the wood. Basically, what do I need for my wood to ensure that I give myself the best chance for success with my live edge project? The good thing is it's really not that complicated. There's a few things you need. One, is it dry? Two, is it dry everywhere? Meaning, are there any pockets of trap moisture in that slab? Three, is it dried properly for my climate? Meaning, is if you buy it from Arizona, it's not gonna be necessarily correctly dried if you live in South Carolina or Oregon and vice versa. Once you've established you have a properly dried slab, you need to know, is there any rot? Are there any soft spots? And that's not always a deal breaker, but you want to be aware of any soft spots or rot you have in your slab. And the last thing you should know is, are there bugs? And I don't want you to be too freaked out, but there probably are bugs in your slab. You just want those bugs to be dead. And we'll go over a few ways to make sure those bugs won't come crawling out after you finish your table. So, is it dry? A lot of people that are just start woodworking go by this rule of one inch per year, meaning if you have a three inch thick slab, is let it dry for three years and it's gonna be dry. Not always the case, actually probably not even usually the case. It can be the case. So how do you know your slab is dry if you can't go by the one inch per year? And the simple answer is you get a moisture meter. And not all moisture meters are created equal. Uh, the people at Wagner were cool enough to send me their top of the line pinless meter. And the difference between a pinless meter and a pin meter is this one actually senses down into the wood, whereas a pin one only takes the moisture right on the surface. And those are incredibly unreliable because the outer surface will often be dry and the inside of the part that matters will not be dry. So this one senses three quarters of an inch down into the slab and that's gonna ensure that you know if the inside of your slab is dry. A reputable slab supplier will most likely have probably the same moisture meter, if not some variation of one of these Wagner pinless meters because they need to test down into the wood. However, they may not always have the time to test every slab all over the entire slab. So I always keep this in my car because what I do is I go around and I test different areas because it's very easy to find an area of trapped moisture and that trapped moisture will likely compromise your slab in the end. So what you need to do, if you don't wanna purchase one of these moisture meters, totally understandable, make sure that your slab player lets you test the slab that you wanna buy with their moisture meter. And make sure, you, again, you test all over the slab because if you have one area of trapped moisture, it completely ruins your project once that starts to dry and twist and warp. And how do you know that it was dried properly for your climate? And there's a few uh, kind of rules of thumb you can go by. I always heard 6% for uh, Arizona, 9% for Oregon. I'm um, not actually sure what the East Coast is, but it's, there's some kind of broad rules, and those actually are pretty close. But the cool thing about the Orion one is it actually can tell you the equilibrium moisture, EMC, of anywhere. Basically, you just turn on, dial in the EMC, and it'll tell you. So what I do is I go into my living room because the moisture content is going to be different than in my shop. And, you know, winter and summer varies a lot more out in the garage. So the Wagner meter will actually tell you the EMC for your specific area, and that'll guarantee you get it just right. And don't worry too much if say it's 9% in your living room and your slab is 10% or 11% or part of your slab says 8% and some parts say 9 or 10. There's going to be like a 1 to 3% variation and that's okay. What you don't want is that 15%, 20% and sometimes I've seen like 30% even from reputable slab suppliers. Now rot seems like it's fairly easy to tell. It's not always as obvious as you think. I've actually gotten slabs almost all the way ready to finish and found a soft spot of wood. And there's a really simple, easy way to check this is take your car keys out, stick them into the wood. If it goes in, it's rotted. If it doesn't, it's fine. So make sure you're aware of any soft spots that you do need to address either by removing that, replacing with something like epoxy or even uh, another matching piece of wood. Bugs probably ruin as many projects as wet wood does, and there's a much simpler way to prevent bugs from ruining your project. And don't worry too much if your project has, you know, bug holes in it, if you see like little holes from uh, when the tree was growing, because most slabs will have some form of bugs or had some form of bugs in them. What you want is those bugs to be dead, and there's a really simple way, and that's a kiln. And pretty much all the wood I buy now is kiln dried, and so that guarantees that the bugs die, because I learned that they need to be at like 130 degrees for 30 minutes at the very core of the wood. And 
So if it's not kiln dried, um, I've even said in my attic, I've taken temperatures up there and you know, when it's 140 degrees all summer up in my attic, I feel pretty confident that that's gonna get to that core of the wood and kill those bugs inside. There are chemical options for killing bugs. I've never personally used them. I don't really like spraying chemicals on wood that is gonna be finished with you know, a fine wood finish. Um, I've heard fine results. I haven't experienced any bad results, but I've never used any of the chemical options myself, but there are out there. So in summary, Basically you need dry wood and you need not just dry wood, but dr wood that's dry throughout the entire slab and wood that's dried properly to your climate. If you wanna buy wet wood, that's totally fine. You can attempt to dry it yourself. You may have you know, varying levels of success with it, but totally fine if you wanna to try to dry the wood yourself. Just be prepared, one, to wait, and two, you may have some varying results of success when it comes to drying that wood. Remember, always treat for bugs, whether that's in a kiln, your attic, or chemicals, or some combination of all three of those. Just make sure you have treated it for bugs because they can and will crawl out of a completely finished table. I've seen them in reputable bars, restaurants. Um, I've even seen bookcases from you know, manufacturers overseas that come over where bugs start crawling out. So make sure they're treated for uh, these little beetles that'll crawl out. Okay, now that you know what you're looking for in Live Edge Wood, you're ready to start shopping. In the next video, I'm gonna help you out with that. I'm gonna discuss what's a fair price for buying these slabs and what does a board foot mean? Because everybody seems to use these kind of scary terms. So we're gonna go over the entire buying process, the best place to buy it, and how to find really good deals on places like Craigslist. Okay, so what was your guess? You guessed 11,000, you nailed it. If you guessed under that, I can't blame you, that's a ton of money and more than I've ever spent on a slab. For this slab though, 90 bucks, and that is right in my wheelhouse, so I thought that was the perfect amount for me. I really appreciate you making it this far. And if you guys have any bad experiences, I would love to hear them in the comments. It really helps encourage other woodworkers to know that they're not the only ones with problems. So let me know in the comments below any problems you've had in the past. Thanks so much.